Welcome back. You're watching Between the Lines. And if you're just joining us, our guest today is Dr. George Knight. He's the author of this wonderful book, Exploring the Letters of John and Jude. That's the epistles of John, 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John. Heather, you know, I, I want to just ask this question. How did you come to write this on, on these particular, or I even get started in this? <laughs> well, I've, ever since I've been a Christian, I've wanted to know more and more about Scripture. And like I said earlier, there's a lot of commentaries out there, but I was saying, how can I help the average person? A person that doesn't have a library or a bunch of, uh, that is a library of biblical stuff, or doesn't have a, um, uh, the knowledge that it would take for a technical commentary, could I write something that would just help the average person? And that was my whole goal. And uh, it, of course, this is a blessing for me. I want to study the Bible. So this gives me a chance to study in depth every Bible book. And uh, before I write one of these, I've spent a couple of years just reading everything I can find on the topic. And you say because it is for the average person that you like to help people find themes and practical application in each yeah. of these. So give us some examples from this one, for example, the letters of John and Jude. What are some of the themes running through those books and the practical information that people could benefit? Well, a lot of people are worried if they've... Uh, about their own forgiveness, about their own standing with God. And of course, one of the great texts in 1 John is if, uh, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And right before that, it says some people deny it and they say, no, they're liars. Everybody's, you know, everybody's a sinner. Anyway, it, 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 this, is, this is where the rubber hits the road. And, and right down there in chapter 2, verse 1, right after that, it says, it's really God's ideal that you don't sin. But if you do, you have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, who died for you. And so there's the whole gospel right within about four or five verses. And in this book, you've mentioned that you actually didn't care for the book of Jude before you started studying this. Well, and then you came to appreciate it. The book of Jude has a lot of thunder and nether darkness uh -huh. and people who live under rocks, so to speak. <laughs> mm -hmm. But you've got to recognize that the book of Jude and the books, the letters of John, were really written at a time when the church was in trouble. And these are men who, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, are desperate to help the church find the center, that Jesus Christ is truly human and divine, and that he has the answer to the sin problem, and that we should remember what the apostles have taught. These men lived in a time of crisis for Christianity, and guess what? What? We're right back there again. Mm -hmm. in, in one way, uh, let's unpack that just a little bit further. How is the church wrestling with, the Christian church wrestling with the divinity of Christ, him being, Christ being equally God and equally human? Well, you know, that is something you have to accept by faith because we don't really understand it, but he can't be the Savior without it. But we're finding in all through the 20th century into the 21st century that we want to take him down to our level, that uh, he was really a good man. And he, he taught wonderful things in the Sermon on the Mount, uh, that, uh, that he's a good example. And basically what John is driving at is that if he's only a good man, we are lost. Hmm. Jesus must be Savior. And in order to do that, he had to become fully human. Well, when it, go ahead. No, there's definitely good news and practical information in all of these books. You mentioned earlier that you had also written about Ecclesiastes and that that was one of your favorite books. Oh, yeah. Well, I, wanna, I got 66 favorite ones. So okay, out. okay. But, all right. You know, well, what, in terms of just here's a person that's asking questions like a postmodern person would ask questions. Right. And most of the book, he's coming up with postmodern answers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Only in the end does he say, hey, that doesn't work. There's nothing there. The whole duty of God is to worship Him and to follow His commandments and because everybody will come into judgment because this thing is going to crash. So it's got a Christian answer to a postmodern dialogue. Uh, you know, these, these, these things are, are really practical. And just like the Song of Solomon, people read that and they say, oh my. You know, but it's about human sexuality. God created them male and female. 
And that's good news. And that's the one Bible book about human sexuality in the form of a poem. But most people just skip it. Yeah, I was going right. to say that, that we hear very few sermons from that people really don't act. I mean, people if, aren't if, that comfortable with no, it. No, they're not comfortable with <laughs> well, it. Well, I can give you some illustrations, but I won't now. Yeah. <laughs> right out of the book. It's a fascinating treatment. And uh, my wife and I really got a blessing from, she, she's my typist. We got a real blessing from our work in Song of Solomon because we applied what we learned. <laughs> well, we won't touch that, but that's, that's good to know. Practical application of the that's Word right. of God. But let me ask you this as we, we touch on the letters of John and Jude, and, and we've got just a minute now. Uh, what, what would you want people to come away with, a devotional commentary? Well, I'll tell you, the same thing that I'd want them to come with every one of my commentaries, and that is that they have a better knowledge of God and a better walk with him. That's crucial because it's, you know, it's, it's the one thing to have God as kind of a big oblong blob, blob up there. It's another thing to be able to know him on a day-by-day -day basis. These are written in short enough segments where people can read them in 10, 15 minutes and begin to meditate if they got time. But God wants to lead his people closer to him. And that's so true. And we hope that you will take this time to get to know God better through his word. These are the kind of helps that are intended to guide you in that direction. These devotional commentaries, they're meant to grow you in the knowledge of God. And if you've not met him, take time to meet him today. He's waiting to meet you. God bless. This program was brought to you by the Hope Channel Network. Thanks to the generous support of viewers like you. In the United States and Canada, call 1-888-4-HOPE-TV. That's 888-446-7388.